What is up, party people? I just got out of... Ooh, lights. Um, ugly Dolls. And... Uh, yeah, that was a thing that happened. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess I should answer or address the elephant in the room first um, about the last review. I know it seemed a little rushed and I seen in the comments people were like, well, what's going on? Uh, something was going on in the parking lot and it got a little weird and I was trying my best to avoid it and then things got interesting and I decided to just check out because I didn't want to be here much longer. That's all I'm going to say about it. I'm going to talk to you about Ugly Dolls. Um, first and foremost, I guess... Well, my mom always said, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. So I guess i got to say something nice. Uh, looks alright. You can tell there was money behind it. Um, wow, like I'm coming across as just really just... I don't know what I... Maybe I'll try this. It'll look better. Who knows? Eh, whatever. Anywho, so the movie Ugly Dolls. I don't know a thing about Ugly Dolls. Um, I'm just throwing everything out the window right now. I don't even care. Um, like, I've seen them in Toys R Us. Uh, in passing, I had to ask my girlfriend if she remembered anything about them because I don't. And she knew they were a thing for a while, uh, but she never saw a passing interest in them. And, I mean, for me, that's that's the thing, right? It's, why now? Uh, I'm not 100%, but weren't these things like big three to five years ago? I don't know. Um, but one thing you got to keep in mind with this is it is not a big budget, um, movie studio behind this. This is not a Disney, this is not a Pixar, Blue Sky, or even Illumination, which is probably a good thing. Um, this is, you know, a smaller animation studio doing some things. Uh, and I, I gotta give it this, they tried something, <laughs> whether or not that's good or bad is another story, but they tried things, um, first off, and I was, I should have, I should have, should have known this was gonna happen, but it's a musical, it is song heavy, and I don't see anything wrong with a musical, per se, I just see something wrong with a musical when you don't have substance so much. Um, and and because it's a musical, this plays into another factor of it. And it goes back to my classic argument of why I am not a fan of having celebrities as your voice actors. Although this one's a little bit turned on its ear. If you're going to do voice actors... It's, uh, first of all, all the major characters in this movie are singers, okay? Blake Shelton, Kelly Clarkson, uh, Zac Efron, you know, people that were popular five or more years ago, and Pitbull. Even Ice T is in this, for God's sakes. As a unicorn. That's all I'm going to say about him. Um, uh, it... And because they're singers, they're not actors. In any way, shape, or form. It gets bad at times. Most notably with the executive producer, P. 
Pitbull. Yes, he put money up for this. Whew, that's why he has to be in it. And there are a couple song breaks with him because Pitbull. Look, I'm not big into his music and I have nothing against him, but oh, all, all I kept on thinking when uh, when he came on and started doing his music thing was Nomeo and Juliet and Sherlock Gnomes, you know. Um, that one, those wonderful pieces of cynical trash, um, produced by the Rocket Man himself. In fact, it even has his name on it, Elton John. <laughs> it's like why, why this is this is this is falling into the same traps, except it's not Elton John all over the place. It's Pitbull breaking into his ugly dog songs. Um. So, yeah, it's, it's, oh God, it's just so weird. I, I, I got so, like, the messages that I have regarding this, it, it is astounding. Um, so I guess I should get into the story a bit, and what a story it is, as I look evil. Uh, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with all of this. It's been a weird day. But what have you. Uh, so it opens up like the Lego movie. There's they have their own version of everything is awesome. Okay. And how they sing that all the ugly dolls of Uglyville are living this grand life and everything is wonderful, except this one who even though everything is awesome wants to get into the real, the big world as they call it. Not the real world, the big world. And, uh, she has no clue about anything else. And she, she, pine, she pines away for this, uh, to, to be held by a child. And, I guess, is the wish of every doll. And, um, so, the deal about that is, you, she wants to be, she wants, she wants some child to love her. Okay, fine. But then we find out that there's, they are these rejects, so to speak. And... She, she and her friends, which, this is why I'm not the biggest fan of musicals. They don't really build character on the, the group. They, uh, they just kind of quick band them together and, okay, yep, these are my friends. Uh, no real building on them, just like, oh, hey, this is a friend I have, and that's where you go. That's not good world building at all. You know, even relationship stuff. It like you don't even you didn't. You were just like, "Oh, yep, you're my friend. You're coming along with me." Oh, I have a cert. And they all have their weird quirks and certain skills and it falls flat. Because they're cramming so much music down your throat with this movie. And that is the biggest problem that I have. Because of all the music, there's very little plot. Uh, this... So, okay. So the main doll wants to see what's in this mystery pipe that they all come flying out of. And that's how they get their new citizens in this awesome world of Uglyville. So they finally go and she gets her friends and they go and discover it why why this is a thing so it, it's just mind-numbingly stupid um it has a decent message but i don't think it's handled the best um i should have expected some i mean i was expecting cynical but i mean it's not 
it's not Gnomeo and Juliet. Sherlock Gnome's bad, but it's it's bad. Um, so they all come up to this. Uh, they go up the pipe and they end up going to this place uh, called Perfection. Now, here's where things go awry. Um, and this is where I start getting a little scared about this movie. So, Perfection is this place where all these pretty dolls go in. And it's a Catholic school nightmare as far as I'm concerned because they're all wearing... The classic Catholic schoolgirl um, clothes, and the boys got you know the same uniform, and it's like, oh god, this is either Catholics or Japanese high schools, and either way, I'm not, I'm weirded out by this, because oh, it just the look on their faces, it, it's a little, t I mean, it's a nice style, like the attention to detail for the you know the the the, the dolls and the way they look. Pretty solid, but just I don't I don't know something about it just just off a kilter for me just a little bit I don't I don't get it but it it, it is what it is but anyway they're at this place called the Institute of Perfection and they have to learn to be the perfect doll and uh, Zac Efron's character is Lou who's in charge of everything. Lou has some issues, and it's uh, it's a little perplexing at times. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Lou. There's a lot of um allusions to fascism here. <laughs> just, just, just the hair. Um. Like a lot of, oh god, um, I got a lot of World War Two vibes from this, primarily uh, Jewish persecution, um, because dude doesn't like the uglies as they are called, um, because everything must be perfection. Um, everything must meet this standard, they don't, and it, it makes, like, I, I don't understand why, like, he really has this deep-seated hatred, um, for the characters. I don't understand completely, I mean, he says it's because they could be loved just as much as he could, and, but he wants to decimate them all, like, really, like, because here's where it gets a little questionable, um, he wants to send them all back to recycling, which is, looks like a furnace, and, uh, yeah, it's not looking kosher, um, <laughs> I'll just say that. Yeah, there's a little bit, just a lot, not just a little bit, a lot of those illusions, and it's like, wow, okay, dude has some deep issues. Um, somebody online, I really, because I was looking up, um, just to see what anybody else thought about it, compared him, called him, he's like a mix of Hugh Hefner and Adolf Hitler, and came up with the, the idea of, um, Hugh Hitler. <laughs> I was like, um, when I read that before I got here, I was like, yeah, I see it. I totally see it. Um, it's, it's a little, mm. but uh, my biggest, but again, it goes back to my biggest complaint. Nothing is really fleshed out because of the musical aspect and the songs take up well over half of this. That's its biggest downfall. Everything's a song. Nothing can just be uh, dealt with. And so it detracts from the overall story. Um, and 
And because of that, you never feel like the movie's progressing at all. Um, even as they, even as the ugly dolls try to strive through to meet the perfection standards and go, the, I guess their final exam is this thing called the gauntlet, where they gotta go through a simulated house. Uh, everything that goes through, I mean, it's just, it doesn't make, it's just so, like, rushed. And if it's not a song, then it's a montage. And so the actual parts where characters develop and grow and everything else might be a grand total of 15 minutes in this film. So you don't see you don't see that happening very much and it doesn't it just doesn't work. And, like, there's no real big climax. There's no real big drama to this. Um, I mean, there's cracks in it, obviously. You know, like, because every fascist state has them. You know, where characters... You know, like, there's always the one that just doesn't kind of get it. And, like, one of the pretty dolls do... do one of the pretty dolls happens to befriend the ugly dolls and then sees her own beauty because she's not pretty because she wears glasses <gasps> and uh, learns that, you know, okay, this, the, these, these, pe these dolls are quirky, but they're fine. Um, and when they get to the, like, when, when the, when the big moments happen, they just feel rushed. Like, for instance, um, Moxie's, Moxie's her name, the, the, the main character, the Kelly Clarkson character, and her friend, the pretty doll, get kidnapped because Lou finds out that they're talking, and Lou wants to get rid of them all. Like, he he's like... You all have this place. I want it gone because you are imperfect. Again, going back to Hugh Hitler, but eh, okay. Um, and the, he's like, oh, you're the first two to go, and throws them into recycling. And then it's like Toy Story 3, the very end of that. And I'm like, oh, where have I seen this before? <laughs> it's like, wow. Didn't really try with this, did you? And so... Really? Your truck alarm is going off? That truck... That looks like an 85 S10. How does it even have a truck alarm? Thank you for figuring that out. Um, like, okay, they're there, and then the alarm, and then the alarm goes off for recycling to start, and then... Before they even really have to like struggle and like, oh my god, we're gonna die. They're they're rescued. And it's like, eh. Or when they go to the gauntlet, I'm expecting something insane. Like this is gonna be like a ten to fifteen minute uh highly dramatic piece. It's not even five minutes. And it's 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 really a letdown. Um, you know, the rest of the movie kind of crawls through, and it becomes a slog because of each thing. There's a song for it, and then when you get to the the actual action part where the pace is picked up, it's over before you know it, and you're just left here like, what just happened? Yeah, I, I don't know the purpose of this. I really don't. I don't know who thought it was a great idea. Obviously, Pitbull and the people who, you know, who made Ugly Dolls were getting a paycheck out of this. But I don't know why, why you would even bother at this point. I mean, that would be like... That would be, like, this movie has the same purpose as if they took, um, 
Oh, I don't know. Let's say... Um... Like, from my youth. Mask. Mask was big for a year. And then, let's say, 45 years later, they made a Mask movie. Okay, you did it. I don't know why you did it, but you did it. Yay. That's kind of what I get with this. Except if Mask was a musical, I'd probably be intrigued. That'd be so weird. Um, and so, it, it, uh, it, yeah, don't know, uh, don't get it, don't care. Uh, grade-wise, C, minus, I'm, it's, it's average. Um, again, I'm not the crowd for it. This is geared for very small children, like five. And I get that, and I'm trying my best, but this this is kind of insulting to five-year-olds. It is. I'm sorry. It's not that good. As I expected. Um, trailers. Because this is not your typical, um, uh, big budget animation, like, every other, every other movie that I've watched, uh, I usually get kid-friendly um, trailers. I didn't this time. And at first when I got into the theater, I was thinking, oh, good, I'll be alone again. This will be fine. Because this movie was starting at 9.45. And I'm like, oh, thank God, this will be... No, no. Um, everybody came in late. I don't get why everyone around here comes in. It's 9.45! Seriously, it's 9.45. Your kids should be in bed, and you're dragging their ass out to a movie theater at a quarter till 10. And you didn't even show up at a quarter till 10. You showed up at 10. I think some of these, I think, so, like, well after 10. Why? 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 You're paying, I mean, we're relatively cheap here, $10 a movie. Why would you drag your kid in this late at night to watch a movie that you're already gonna, you missed like twenty percent of? It does. Um, I, oh, I don't care. I don't care. But I'm glad no children were in the theater when the um, trailers were on because I really actually I kind of wish there were because at least the conversations that would have followed would have been fun and interesting. Because, again, there were three trailers, uh, two of them, well, the one for my spy with Batista, Dave Batista is like, okay, he's just doing the rock thing now, and I don't care, I wouldn't watch this thing, it's called My Spy, I don't care, I'm probably not gonna watch that, I mean, my rule is, it has to be animated or PG, or lower, and if it's live action, I have to really think about it. Um, I ain't gonna. I don't care about that. Uh, there's another one that's uh, a lot of senior citizens who want to get back into cheerleading called Palms. Yeah, there's a lot of death and boner jokes, and um, I don't know if there would have been a parent comfortable enough to talk about that. But it would have been interesting to see. The one, though, that got me, and I don't know if I should, like, I have to really think about it. Um, Because when I saw the trailer for this, half of me wanted to say, oh my god, this is a college humor trailer? Like, this isn't real. Um, I guess Dora the Explorer is getting her own movie. And it's not animated, it's live action. And a lot of it screams college humor because the way everything's presented and the and the themes and it's like this 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 isn't real. This can't be. I'm I don't know. But when I looked at it, like I might go see that out of morbid curiosity. 
to think how in God's green earth you're going to take this. Because it looks like it's a mix of Dora with Tomb Raider and uh, some questionable things. Like she's carrying a huge knife. Uh, she's got all this, uh, it, 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 like, it's fish out of water at first, and it goes back, it looks, like, like I said, the trailer probably sums up the whole thing, it's a, it, it, but it looked like a college humor video, straight up. So, alright, um, yeah, like I said, C minus, not that great, I don't really know, um, but check all the stuff, Horse Moment Media. Uh, Facebook and Roller Geezer for the Instagram and uh, see you next time.